Welcome back for another episode of the Jester Section Hiker Podcast. I am your host, Julie Jester Gayhart, and it is Sunday morning, August 11th, 2024, and I am still at Black Mountain Campground. I am in site number four, and the campground is in western North Carolina, and I should set the picture for y'all this morning. I am sitting in my camp chair. Um, We have a site that is close to the South Toe River. And I am covered with my favorite blanket that has deer and fox all over the blanket. And I am drinking my second cup of coffee from my new mug that I bought at the top of Mount Mitchell yesterday after I got done climbing. Uh, the bug has Mount Mitchell State Park and it has a bear on it in the elevation 6,684 feet. So I am enjoying that this morning. But today I am going to be climbing up to the Green Knob Fire Tower and take you along with me. That trail also leaves right here from the Black Mountain Campground, just like the Mount Mitchell hike did in last week's episode. And uh, I should say that the Black Mountain Campground is a great place to come set up and base camp. There's plenty of hiking, mountain biking, and fun for the family. And you also have uh, the South Toe River. I should also mention again, or not again, but should mention, there are a few free campsites along the Forest Service Road, which is right next to or adjacent to the Black Mountain Campground, but I will say you're probably going to have to plan ahead to snag one of those sites if you want to get one for the weekend. The resources that I'm going to be using for this hike, Peter Barr's book, of course, Hiking North Carolina's Lookout Towers, just like the Mount Mitchell hike, I still have the same book. It's weathered. The pages I'm going to be reading um, today are... For some reason, I actually tore them out of the book. So I love a good weathered book with notes. I'm going to be taking with me the North Carolina High Peaks map that I got here right from the campground for free. I do have this hike loaded on the All Trails app. I probably won't need to use it. I've done this hike multiple times, but I have it loaded on there just in case. And I should add that every single hike that I go on I do carry my spot device for emergencies, every single hike. So before I get going here this morning and uh, (laughs) finish drinking my coffee, I still have to get dressed, get my pack ready, all that stuff. I want to read to you from Peter Barr's book about the Green Knob Fire Tower. So here we go. The Green Knob Lookout, visible in both directions, from below on the Blue Ridge Parkway is reached by a short hike from a nearby overlook. It consists of a 14 by 14 foot live-in cab elevated 21 feet above the ground by a two-stage steel tower. Its steel parts were manufactured by the Weirton Steel Corporation of West Virginia and Carnegie Steel of Pennsylvania. The lookout was built in 1931 by the United States Forest Service. Unlike the construction of most fire towers, CCC workers likely did not participate since nearby camps arrived after its erection. A single flight of stairs reaches reaches its cab and catwalk. The lookout was staffed by the U.S. Forest Service through the late 1970s. All lookout operations in the former Tocane Ranger District ceased by the end of the decade. In 1977, a district inspection concluded that the tower was not needed and can be removed. An identical tower on Little Snowball Mountain was dismantled in 1980. Luckily, the tower on Green Knob avoided the same fate. Unfortunately, during the next two decades, it deteriorated significantly and eventually had its wooden stairs removed to bar access. By 1993, a Forest Service survey found the tower to be considerably in disrepair, and it was again threatened by removal. Fortunately, it was rehabilitated extensively in 1996 when its roof, catwalk, stairs, floor, weatherboards, 
and interior walls were replaced. It was listed on the National Historic Lookout Register in 1998. Subsequent harsh weather and vandalism have taken their toll on the tower and its cab again, slowly deteriorating. Further restoration efforts involving the FFLA, the USFS, and Burnsville Historical Society are planned to continue the preservation of the tower. The tower sits just south of the highest contour on the USGS quadrangle and therefore is not at the exact summit. Indeed, the highest ground on the mountain is in the brushy area about 100 yards north of the lookout. The peak's exact elevation isn't known, but since it is not significantly higher than the tower, it likely isn't much above 5,080 feet. That would make it a tall mountain for a lookout tower if it were not located adjacent to two of North Carolina's highest ranges, the Black Mountains and the Great Craggy Mountains. Nevertheless, it is the highest mountain in the Blue Ridge chain until Grandfather Mountain, 35 miles northwest. Its name, very common among southern Appalachian peaks, refers to its heavily forested slopes. The tower saddles the Yancey County, McDowell County line, as well as the Eastern Continental Divide. And this is my best part where he talks about the view. The view of Black Mountains from the fire tower on Green Knob is absolutely stunning. Nearly every peak is visible in the highest and most rugged mountain range in the eastern United States is above 6,000 feet. The entire view from the west to the north is dominated by the massive range. Mount Mitchell, 6,684 feet, the highest peak in the east, is centrally located to the northwest. And this, y'all, I'm skipping a little bit ahead in his uh, writing in the book to this part because this is my favorite part. I cannot wait to get to this tower to see this particular view. So when you're sitting on the tower steps on a clear day, which today I believe is going to be a clear day, this is what you'll see. To the right of Mount Mitchell are several jagged peaks that extend north. Mount Craig and the adjacent Big Tom are separated by a gap from the three-peak group of Balsam Cone, Cattail Peak, and Potato Hill. You will notice the sheer rock cliffs below the summit of Potato Hill. The appropriately named Deep Gap separates the next group of summits, which include Winter Star Mountain, Gibbs, and Cielo or Cello Knob, I don't know how to say that, so somebody out there who knows needs to contact me and let, let me know. This hike, uh, there is uh, two ways you can get to the fire tower, which the first one I read earlier, which is right off of the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is hike number one in the book, but I will be taking hike number two on the Green Knob Trail, or also known as the Lost Cove Ridge Trail, the ele elevation gain on this hike is 2,300 feet in 3.3 miles, and Peter has rated this strenuous. So once again, I will be taking you along with me on this hike. I will be reading more of the description of this hike as I reach certain areas along the way. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get ready, and I'll be back once I hit the trail. I am back and climbing on the Green Knob Trail, or also known as the Lost Cove Ridge Trail. And I believe I have reached almost the mile point. And I wanted to read y'all, I actually brought one of the torn out pages with me. I have the book in my pack, but I put this torn out page in my fanny pack and I wanted to read you all the beginning of the description of this hike because every single hike in this book has a very detailed description of the hike pretty much turn by turn. And uh, it says, The Route. This trail is alternately known as the Green Knob Trail and the Lost Cove Ridge Trail. The latter name referring to the ridge it climbs to the tower. And y'all, the one... Well, one of the things that I love about this hike is you could definitely tell you are on a ridge and the direction I'm going in this hike, which is up, 
I can look out to my right and every so often I can peek through the rhododendron and uh, I can start to see the crest of Mount Mitchell off to my right. And it's such a great feeling to be on this side of the mountain and to look over and see what you did the day before. Which, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, that was my climb to Mount Mitchell. So I do recommend going and listening to that one as well. So when this hike starts, it says, Beyond the signboard, it enters an open hemlock grove and immediately climbs a set of stair logs. Another Carsonite signpost identifies the trail. For the next quarter mile, the trail is easy to lose since the forest understory is very open and the path is crossed by several shortcuts. Simply follow the rectangular yellow blazes, which are sometimes mixed with white blazes in this section. The Appalachian Ranger District recently co converted all of its trail blazes to yellow, so sometimes both colors bark the way. After the stairs, the trail soon makes a right, which is west, then veers back to the left, heading southwest to climb the hillside. And that's what I've been doing ever since. It reaches a double blaze intersection at 0.3 mile. An overgrown trail reads to the left, or not reads, leads to the left. And that overgrown trail is now the part of the Mountains to Sea Trail. So the Mountains to Sea Trail takes off to the left. The Green Knob Trail and the River Trail take off to the right. And uh, then it says... Uh, at point four mile, the trail reaches an intersection with the signed River Loop Trail, which branches off to the right, take the left fork, and head up the hill. So, since the release of this book back in 2008, I will say the signage for the trail is very clear. You'll know which way to go, but when you do start off on the climb, you're actually on three trails. Mountains to Sea, the River Loop, and the Green Knob Trail. So, all right, uh, da da da. Take the left fork and head up the hill. The trail climbs moderately to an open level gap at point nine, then ascends very steeply to a knob covered with mountain laurel, rhododendron, and galax. And I am pretty sure I am on that knob because I can see galax. I am surrounded by mountain laurel and uh. <laughs> And the trail is definitely going up. So after point nine, uh, it says the ascends very steeply and that you will catch a breather at 1.4 as the trail heads sharply downhill from the knob to reach a very small gap with an exceptionally large buckeye tree on the right at mile 1.6. So, all right, that is as far as I am going to read from the book now. I'm going to tuck this back in my fanny pack and uh, continue up this knob. And part of the why that I love to do this trail is, number one, obviously, the fire tower has the best views. Number two, I can see, as I stated before, Mount Mitchell at its crest off to my right. And number three, it's kind of become a tradition for me. Every time I've come to Black Mountain Campground and climbed Mount Mitchell, it just seems the next day I go up another heinous, very strenuous climb and uh, go up here to Green Knob Fire Tower. So it's become a tradition. I just can't help myself. I will say, very surprisingly, I am not sore. I am very tired. And I am feeling that now. And that's okay. Because today, I am slowing down, taking breaks, and just cruising along. And it doesn't matter how long it takes me to get up to the fire tower. So, another beautiful day in the Western North Carolina mountains. And you guys, it is Carolina blue skies. And I am excited to get to the fire tower because I know the views are going to be absolutely stunning. And right now, as I peek through 
the mountain laurel and the rhododendron here, I can kind of see the tippy top of Mount Mitchell. And uh, boy, oh boy, if I can get up to the top, I will see the entire crest, which is another trail, the Black Mountain Crest Trail, which I will read about to you all uh, later in this episode because I have plans this fall to go complete that hike as well. So, all right, y'all, I am headed down and you know, as I read, only to go back up. I'll check back in. All right, I am back and I am pretty sure I have made it past the 1.6 miles and uh, I'll catch you guys up. So, in Peter Barr's book, if you can't tell, I'm totally out of breath because you are literally going up this spine and you can definitely tell it's a spine at this point with uh, ridge lines on the right and ridge lines on the left. Y'all, you have got to come climb this trail. Absolutely gorgeous. And come when it is a beautiful weather day because you won't be disappointed at the tower. But let's get on with this. After 1.4 miles, it says you will catch a breather as the trail heads sharply downhill from the knob. We did that to reach a very small gap with an exceptionally abrupt, with an exceptionally not abrupt, large buckeye tree on the right at 1.6 miles. We did that. Following the gap, a short but abrupt climb will bring you to a level ridge line. Then comes a slight descent to a gap filled by an open hem hemlock grove. Enjoy this brief downhill since it will be your last, and we just did that. So I believe we are at 2.1 miles, and it says it is suitable for camping, has several flat sites to accommodate tents. tents. Yep, I see that. And then, here's the best part. <laughs> the Green Knob Trail now begins an intense terraced ascent toward the tower. It leaves the pleasant gap and climbs very steeply up the nose of the ridge through unhealthy hemlocks. After ascending two switchbacks, it reaches a level section at 2.4 miles. Stop here to breathe. After that, a severe ridgeline climb will bring you to another level area at 2.8 miles. This is the last terrace. The final ascent will have your legs burning and lungs bursting. As the trail narrows and ascends through a rhododendron and mountain laurel tunnel straight up the spine of the ridge, you may have to raise your knees high and use your hands to pull yourself up the mountain as you negotiate several rocky crags. This section gains 840 feet at just 0.6 of a mile. And y'all, that is where I am at. It says a few openings in the vegetation allow for scenic views back toward Mount Mitchell and the ridge line of the Black Mountains to the northwest. The trail finally arrives at the summit clearing at 3.3 miles. The left trail leads 0.4 down to the Blue Ridge Parkway, and that is where I will be headed once I spend some time at the tower down to the parkway to get picked up. It says turn right to immediately reach the tower. You won't miss the tower when you get to the point. You will see it. And uh, the views, the amazing views are coming. Got to take my readers back off. They are fogged up and soaked with sweat. And I am going to zip all this stuff up. And we are going to continue on the spine as we go up and up and up. And overall, I feel actually really good based on how the climb went going up Mount Mitchell. Just going slow today, taking breaks, drinking taking in food. Well, I say food, but bars and goo as I go. And uh, just having a good time. Right now, I am feeling the breeze of nature's air conditioning, which feels really good. The weather is amazing. The temps aren't too bad. And up and up we go. So I will come back on as I get up to the tower and uh, talk to you guys about the views up there, read to you guys uh, some more information <laughs> about part of the part of a different hike that I want to do, but you can see the view of that hike from this tower. So 
Here we go. Be back shortly. Made it to the tower. I am actually standing on just about the highest step you can go. The cab is closed, but you can uh, climb up on the steps. That area is not closed. And I am looking out over right now Mount Mitchell and the crest of the Black Mountain Crest Trail, a 12 mile trail that I plan on hiking this coming October. And uh, what a gorgeous day here in Western North Carolina. I actually carried uh, binoculars up here with me um, so I could really dial in and look over, uh, wow, just all the 6,000 foot peaks I could see. I've took, taken some good video, and I will load that when this episode comes out over on my Julie Gayhart YouTube channel. I decided that <laughs> this is one of the steep, this is pretty steep to get up here, um, but very enjoyable trail at the same time. And uh, I came up with three new criteria. Um, you know you're hiking steep when you put your hiking pole down and you feel like you have to extend the pole. You know you're hiking steep if all you feel like you are doing are calf raises on the highest possible weight that you could do a calf raise. And the third one I came up with is you know you're hiking steep when you stop to catch your breath and you have to hold on to a tree so you don't fall backwards. So <laughs> those are the three things that I came up with on this hike. Just something fun. Um, it is short sweet, steep, and to the point. I'm just going to sit up here and enjoy the view. Like I said, I am going to head down the 0.4 mile trail that leads down to the Blue Ridge Parkway, and uh, I'm going to get picked up there, and I think we're going to go to, to the town of Burnsville again. I want to go to the visitor center because I want to find out more information about a new trail that Jennifer Farr Davis created in this area called the Appalachian High Route. And they're supposed to have all kinds of information at the uh, visitor center there. So I'm going to find that out because that trail interests me as well. I believe it's 311 miles circular loop that includes the Mountains of Sea Trail, the Appalachian Trail, and the Black Mountain Crest Trail that I am staring at right now. And uh, on my way down, uh, or maybe when I close out this episode, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm going to enjoy the fire tower here, head down, and then I will close out the episode uh, where I am going to get picked up. Another amazing day in Western North Carolina. I am going to sit here, have a drink, get out my binoculars, enjoy the view, have a snack and then head on down. I'll be back soon to close out the episode. All right, y'all. I am still at the tower, the Green Knob Tower. I've had the tower to myself. So I've just sat down on the steps, got the binoculars out, got Peter Barr's book out of my backpack, had a snack, had some drink, and decided to come back on and end the episode here. It just seems fitting that I would close it out here at the tower. But uh, going forward, there's a couple things I'm going to be working on. More hiking to come. One of the trails that I want to do in October, um, hopefully I've got a group of uh, friends coming down and we are going to take on the 12 mile Black Mountain Crest Trail. And I'm going to tell you what Peter Barr says about it in his book. Hiking North Carolina Lookout Towers, he says, the 12-mile Black Mountain Crest Trail is heralded as one of the most difficult in the eastern United States. It ascends 3,300 feet in just 4.6 miles from its trailhead at Bolins Creek to Cello Knob at the northern end of the range. It then continues 7.4 miles over a multitude of jagged 6,000-foot peaks eventually reaching the Mount Mitchell Lower Parking Area to connect to the Mount Mitchell Summit Trail. The Black Mountain Crest Trail is steep, rugged, and often overgrown. The pitch of one ascent is so difficult that a rope is tied to a tree to aid hikers in pulling themselves up the astonishingly, astoni 
astonishingly steep slope. The route is also known as the Deep Gap Trail, denoting the portion within the state park leading about four miles to Deep Gap. The location of a pleasant high altitude campsite at the site of a former shelter. In addition to the Mount Mitchell Trail, several other trails ascend the eastern ridge line of the Blacks, including the Woody Ridge Trail, the Colbert Ridge Trail, and the Buncombe Horse Trail. Each provides a very, very challenging hike up the tallest mountains in eastern America. So the Black Mountain Crest Trail is on the docket for this October, but I'm not done on this leg of the trip. Um, I started bagging Lookout Towers from Peter Barr's book back in 2008. A week or so ago, I decided it was time to finish off the three towers that I need to complete from the book, and I'm going to do that this fall. And uh, I will be going to one of those towers tomorrow. So next week's episode will be all about hiking to Flat Top Manor on the Moses Cone Estate right off of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Another resource I wanted to mention that takes care of trails in this area on the Appalachian Trail and the Black Mountains and the Craggies on Mountains of Sea Trail is the Carolina Mountain Club and the Lookout Tower Challenge that is connected to Peter, Bar Peter Barr's book is on the Carolina Mountain Club website, along with all other challenges, trail maintenance, and all the wonderful things that they do. So please, if you're in this area, check out the Carolina Mountain Club website. This episode is also going to be dedicated to Peter Barr. I shared with you all last week that he recently had brain surgery and had a tumor removed from his brain. He is recovering, but as you all can imagine, the process is slow. His family does have a GoFundMe set up, so I will leave that link in the description of this episode along with all the resources I have mentioned earlier and y'all still sitting here at the tower getting ready to head down and head into Burnsville and find out more information again about the Appalachian High Route. So in the future... You've got uh, tomorrow, which will be next week's episode, about uh, Flat Top Manor Mountain Tower that I'm going to be going to tomorrow. I'm going to be hiking the Black Mountain Crest Trail in October, and then I want to find out more information about the Appalachian High Route created by Jennifer Barr Davis. So as always, we'll close it out here. Thanks for listening. Be safe out there, and happy section hiking. Happy section hiking.